I am going to ask you to turn off your video. I'm going to turn off my video as well. Um, we're just going to leave Eleni on her video. Uh, just because it's a little, it's there's so much with Flipgrid because we're going to be showing you her really cool PowerPoint, which I loved the PowerPoint itself. So we can even learn like about good PowerPoints. Um, <laughs> and also we're going to be playing with Flipgrid. So it's going to, I feel like it's a little bit confusing to also have all of our pictures up and, and videos going. So if you can just turn off your video, um, and if you can turn off your audio as well, audio is going to be very important in this session because when we do go over to make our flip grids, when we're practicing, we don't wanna distract ourselves with the audio that's coming from the Zoom itself. So just keep your mic off um, until we get to the point where we stop and ask for questions and things like that. And I'm going to, oh wow, this is really good. We got basically 100% poll answer. So here's the poll responses. Um, totally new 60 percent awesome some experience 36 percent and there's a person who has tried it a lot who i'm hoping is going to help us with even more ideas with, which is great um so there's a lot to cover do not worry we are recording this session we will post it on youtube in the next couple of days um, to our youtube channel and since there's a lot to look at and play with i'm going to turn it over to eleni um, and she is going to uh, share her screen and walk us through. And I'm going to watch the chat. So if you want to keep your chat box open to the side, if there's something going on, Eleni, I'll interrupt you and say, oh, about this thing, could you say this again or, or whatever? Okay, perfect. All righty. Well, hi, guys. Um, I'm new at this, so bear with me. Yeah, you know what? I realized I didn't um, even introduce ourselves. I I'm Laura Becker. I'm I'm a professor at Hunter College in the TESOL program, and I'm president of New York TESOL. And then, Eleni, I'll let you introduce yourself. Oh. Well, um, I'm Eleni of Carpitas. I am an ENL e ELA teacher. Um, I teach 7 through 12 in the Sawanica School District. So um, now with the remote learning, it's been a very interesting transition. So before we jump into Flipgrid, um, I want to point out um, the website. Um, I've been trying to attend as many PDs as I can just because we're not given this time to really learn new programs and things like that. So I've been trying to tap into all these different PDs while I can, and I stumbled upon the New York State TESOL group just through a Facebook uh, Remind app. And I was like, oh, let me join this PD. And I was like, oh my God, I have been missing out. It was just a bunch of ENL teachers that were discussing some positive things that we've seen, some struggles that we've been having, and coming up with solutions. So I wanted to. Uh, show you guys how to join um, the New York State TESOL group and it is amazing. It is people who are just trying to work together, come up with different strategies. So from the website, if you click over here, you can join and it's 2020 for our wonderful year. And you are joining a community of people that are constantly wanting to help one another. What is also awesome, if I can skedaddle, there we go. We have resources over here. And what's awesome is there are translated versions of Google Classroom tutorials that can be sent to parents, especially if you work with the younger grades and they want to become more involved. There are different opportunities for webinars. There are just so many things that you can find under the resources page. So I would want to recommend people to also go over there and you can also earn CTLE hours if you are a member, which we all need and you're working with a great group of people. So it's a win-win. So um, why New York State TESOL? You're just working with awesome people. I'm not going to read this. This is what we 
tell our student teachers not to do, don't read directly from the slides, but we are learning from each other. We are finding new ways to incorporate technology. We are figuring out how to reach out to those students. What are things that have worked for other people? So it's just an amazing group and I'm so happy that I stumbled across it by accident because I feel like it has been amazing during this process and I'm really excited for what's to come when we slowly return back to normal. Um, so as we go to Flipgrid, what is Flipgrid? It is essentially a video discussion platform. Teachers are able to post a topic and students respond to these topics with their own short videos. Uh, the students are engaged, they are speaking, and they are able to respond to one another. So it, it could get really fun if you have that group of students that feel really comfortable with one another. Uh, why use Flipgrid? Um, for the first three to four weeks of remote learning, I was doing read this, write a response. Um, I attended a PD on Flipgrid actually. And at first I wasn't, I wasn't understanding it. So I wasn't a huge fan of it. But when I had to use it for myself during a program called EdCamp, I realized, oh my God, my students can now listen to each other and they could speak to each other. Many of our students don't speak English at home. So when we're asking them to keep reading and writing on their own, they still need to be able to do the listening and the speaking portion. So Flipgrid is a really good way to incorporate students to use these language skills without feeling as though they're on the spot. No one is directly looking at them. They just get to speak. You could set a timer. They could speak for 15 seconds. They could speak for a couple of minutes. It's up to you to manage how you'd like to use it. So first things first, Flipgrid lingo. I didn't realize how much lingo there was till I was really reading through it. So you have your educator dashboard and on your dashboard, you have all of these different areas. So your grid is actually your class. So I teach high school. So I have a grid for my English 10 class and one of my English nine classes. So I currently have two grids within the grids you have your topics and those are your individual lessons. If you are focusing on, um, I did pre-reading for Animal Farm, that would be its own lesson. If you're doing um, the analysis of the first chapter, that would be a different lesson. And so the responses is how the students are able to respond to what you have put up, what prompt you have uh, posted up. And the reply is really fun because students can respond to one another using this video form. So it's an extension of having a class conversation where students are doing it on their own time. They don't have to answer right away and they actually get to think and form a response. We all have that one student that raises their hand right away. So this is a really cool way for the students to really think about what they want to say and feel confident in participating. So creating your account. How do I create my account? Um, I took this right out of the uh, Flipgrid guidebook, which I have a link for um, towards the end, but it's really, really, really simple. So you will go to flipgrid.com and in the top right corner, you will click educator sign up and you sign up with a Google account or a Microsoft account, whichever you have. My school is a Google school, so I signed up with the Google account. The second step is where you just put in a little bit of information, you know, what age group do you work with, uh, where are you located, things like that. And that's it, quick and painless. So what I would like to do is give you guys a moment or two to create your account. And while we're all here, you can let me know if you're having any trouble as you're creating the account. So you can do this obviously on this same device that you're using. You can um, 
hit escape or view options and minimize the zoom screen so you can see your other screen or click back and forth. So we're going to give you a moment here. And if you are having trouble, just use the zoom group chat. Um, and I'm going to go over here and open my account also. If you have your um, account set up, you could give use the um, reactions button or the green check button on Zoom to let us know that you have set that up. If you go into the participants area of Zoom, there is a green check mark that you can pop up on your name. Okay. Got to find out who SMC Namara is. <laughs> All right, Megan and Lizette. I see the green check marks coming up, but they have been able to set that up. Oh, enter. And it's all free, Eleni? Yes. Awesome. I haven't had to worry about that, which is awesome because free is good in education. <laughs> And do your students have to set an account up or it's just you as the teacher needs an account, but your students could participate on a Flipgrid without an account? Um, the students will get the link and then they will, um, they will be asked to join in uh, with their Google form, if I'm not mistaken, because I've tried to join in as a student mm -hmm. and it asked for my Google account. Okay. Um, and you can always alter, I'm actually going to go over that um, in a little bit. You can decide how you want students to join your class. You can allow them to join with any email account that they have, or you can have it be your school-based email account. So depending uh, on the grade level, um, I recommend different things. I see. So that might be something to consider that if they, if you want them, for example, to use their, um, the the domain of your school's gmail or whatever to, to tell them to use that email login yeah so because i work with grade 7 through 12 they each have their own email account with the school so i prefer that they just use that one yes but if i was working with the lower grades or you know even seventh and eighth grade you could still have them do it through an outside account so that their parents can look on yes understood so, it really depends on preference. You know, I teach 11th grade and um, none of them showed up for parent teacher conference. So I'm assuming they're not going to join on Flipgrid. Aye. That'll be another <laughs> thing. Another webinar topic is, yeah, fan, uh, conferencing via online. Okay. So we have a lot of comments here. People have signed up and basically, um, Lizette was pointing out that students can join and participate, like you said, Eleni, with the code you give them. But as a teacher, to create a flip grid, a grid and topics, you would need to open your account. Okay, so I think we're ready. Okay, awesome. So um, the next thing, creating grids. How many grids do I need? Um, it really depends for how many classes you teach and how many classes you think you know, you will use this for. So I teach five courses. I would probably create a grid for each of my courses. Whereas maybe if you teach elementary school, maybe you will have one for science and social studies, math, English. So you can do it however organized you want to be. I am the queen of organization. So um, I don't believe in less is more in this context. <laughs> have as many grids as you want. So everything is in one place. Makes me happy. Um, so to create a grid. So this is essentially what we were just discussing. Um, as you create a grid, you determine how you want students to log in. So I personally, I chose the first option for school email domain. Um, other people have recommended using the PLC in public. 
because that is also helpful for parents to join in and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. So it really, again, it depends on your preference. So for the name of the grid, very simple. Mine is English, uh, English 10. One so your question there, because it came up, I think, from Amber in the chat. To participate and create your own flip video, you do need to have the email, but to just view it, for example, you wouldn't? I think that students, as long as they have the code and they okay. log in with their email, I think they are set to participate. But so they do have to have the email to participate. You know what? I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so we can always, if, if anybody knows that answer, put it in the chat. And, and this is what's great about these webinars is we all learn together. So there's always some aspect that someone asks about that we haven't thought of. Um, so definitely crowdsource. If folks know, please let Amber know in the chat. Okay, keep going, sorry. No problem. Um, so my school uh, uses uh, Google Classroom. So once my grid is ready, um, well, I also cyber stalk my students. I send it to them via Remind. I send it to them on Google Classroom and also Google Hangout. Um, so they can tell me they didn't get it. Um, so you have a way, you can choose how you want to give this information to your students. Um, my first go-to is Google Classroom. And then I also use those other platforms so that they don't get lost or say they couldn't find it. So again, you have, your own methods, whatever works for your classroom. Uh, then you can customize your grids. Now, what's interesting is if you, you click on the pencil and then you can add it, you can edit it. So notify me, receive an email notification when new student videos are added to the topics in the grid. I don't know about you guys, when we first transitioned from traditional learning to remote learning, my email was inundated. I, there were just so many emails. I had to go to Google Classroom settings and turn off emails. So that is more of a preference thing. If you don't wanna be receiving all of those emails, I would turn off that notification. And what's cool is now they have updated it because this is from fall 2019. They have updated it and you could decide how often you want to get emails. So you could maybe set it up for daily or weekly, which would help out. So you can play with these and see what works for you guys. Um, so we're going to try this out. Now, when you create a video, um, it gets a little weird. Um, you have to click on the little green button, which I will show you. I'm also going to give you a link because uh, that would be helpful. Um, so you will click the link. You will then click our little green cross, so to speak. You will record your live video. You will then review your video. And then you take a selfie and you submit it. Now, what is really awesome is, one, um, you can cover yourself so you're not viewed during the video. So that was something that some of my students were concerned about. I had a student who was sending me a message on Google Hangout. And he's like, Miss, I, I uploaded the video and, and you see me, but no one else has seen it. I want to delete my video. I was like, all right, all right, I'll, I'll delete it. Do it again. <laughs> but he was very upset about it. So it's good so that the students don't feel self-conscious. And I mentioned that I had used EdCamp and part of EdCamp was responding to different prompts and giving feedback to other teachers. And I felt really silly talking to my computer. I was recording, I was deleting. I was like, oh my God, I'm fidgeting. Why do I keep touching my hair? It's not going anywhere. Um, so it's awesome because you can record the video and have it blocked off. And then with your selfie, you can also put a sticky over your head. And I will show you how my screen looks for my students. So, yeah, hello, there we go. Um, I'm going to take this link and put it in the group chat. Let's see. Chat. Okay. 
So that is a link to our chat. Um, and that will take you right here to this will be our grid. And so just to show you, um, I did a project with my kids and I wanted to show them that you could make silly faces so that they would be more interested in it. So at the very end, I put um, a little ghost on my face. I put this weird shocked smiley face, the glasses. I think that looks very similar to me on a regular basis. <laughs> I was thinking maybe that was Karl Marx somehow, like an image of him that you were <laughs> using there. Very nice. Lennon was celebrating. I'm not sure why he was celebrating and wasn't very good for him, but um, <laughs> You know, so I just try to show my students that they can make it a little, a little more engaging in a sense. So this is our grid. And okay, so, good for privacy too, right? So students who don't want to have their faces shown, that's exactly. a nice way to block them out, yeah. Yeah, they just, they feel more comfortable. I've noticed that even when I do my Google Hangout sections, almost all of my kids are blanked out. And I'm like, are you guys turning it on and leaving? And they're like, no. I'm like, I'm sure some of you are. I'll find out who it is. <laughs> but they, um, they block out. They don't feel comfortable. And there's a lot of stuff going on. And, you know, I've learned to embrace it. I have, um, you know, I, I have my dog. He's currently next to me. I pick him up and I'm like, hey, guys, Apollo wants to know if you did your reading. But they don't feel comfortable at this point to uh, you know embrace their backgrounds so um i totally understand when they don't want to do that so what i want you guys to do and then i guess we'll all mute um i know that was one of the confusions yes um so here sorry go ahead no no i was gonna say you give us the directions and then when you are ready for us to go off and record we'll both you will be mute over here yeah, apparently I had to start the discussion. So what's even more awkward than speaking to my computer is having to record in front of everyone on the computer too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, it, it's like a Baroque painting. You know, it's just like a Lenny in a Lenny and a Lenny. Yeah, keep going. I'm going to totally just model this for you. So I'm going to make my recording and say, oh, you got to wait. This is where I fidget. Hi, everyone. Woo. <laughs> That is my video. Uh, and then you will click next. Fidget. All right, I'm clicking next again. Now I take my selfie. <laughs> and I don't want my face to show. And we're going to, let's see. I'm actually melting right now. It is so hot in my house. <laughs> That's cute. My dog is in a heater, so we're, we're melting. <laughs> so that is my picture. OK. And it's maybe frozen. There we go. Okay. If you get to this step, you have to click submit. If you don't click submit, the awkward speaking into into your computer was all for nothing. I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta do it again. Oh gosh. Okay. So now the um, the video is visible, and now everyone else can create their videos. So once you go on, you will click the green little cross. Let me get you back here. Oh, whoopsie, my bad. So you will click uh, the green little cross, record your video, review it, take your selfie, and then you will click submit. And so, I mean, these are just any little, topic that you can mention. So, Alani, if you can share your screen again and then yeah. tell us the the grid the code. Oh, did I take off screen uh, screen share? Yeah, but I I don't think you meant to. So, I just let I you not. know. Yep. What am I doing? That's All okay. Right. Okay. So, um here is how you will upload the video. Okay. Uh, cross record review, take your selfie, click submit. Um, so here are some topics that you can use to, you know, say anything you want to just wave to me. That's fantastic. Um, 
And so here is the link over here. Uh, sometimes I wish my last name was shorter. So now in the in the chat, could I just put the code and people can go to Flipgrid and enter the code? I yes, I think that would work actually. What what's the code for the um for the flip for the flip grid for the grid? Well, is it is my whole last name, which essentially has every letter of the alphabet, um, F Carpitas. Oh, so it's that that last part of this URL thingy. Yes. F Carpitas eight oh oh two. And what's cool is you can actually change your code uh, before it is officially developed. You have the ability to change that back end. I just thought, let me make everyone's life difficult with the 10 letter name. <laughs> okay, so if I'm on Flipgrid right now, where do I find where to enter a code? It should pop up. Let me open another tab. It's because it's, it's, I'm seeing my grids. So here, as soon as you go to Flipgrid, it says enter a flip. Oh, so I have to be back on the main site. Okay, because I'm in my own, probably, my own site. Yeah, you have to get out of your site. I, okay. Yesterday, I couldn't get out of the student site. <laughs> yeah, yeah, got it. Okay. So now I, I come out, I'm just going to it on, on the web and not logged in. Info at flipgrid.com. And now I get that screen. Okay. All right. So. Oh, I'm sorry. People are, are dare to walk outside. <laughs> okay. Um, when they come we're with. Gonna mute. I don't mind. So we're going to mute for like two minutes. Okay. So don't panic everybody. We're, we're, we're here. We're going to mute um, and give it a try. Hello. I wish I could go outside.
Okay, Lenny. I don't know if everyone's done, but you're seeing on your grid, will you see them kind of coming in as they come in? Let's see. I can jump back in. No, that's Fidget. Me. No, that's me. No, I'm fidgeting. <laughs> Because I posted mine. Okay. Let's see. Let's view this. Okay. Okay. Oh, so yeah. We have lots of videos. Yay. So, um, to people. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so you guys made it through your first video. <laughs> um, I remember the first time I did the video, the first thing I thought was, oh God, I look like that right now. Um, so the next time I made a video, I did my makeup. <laughs> uh, and I was like, you know, the lighting was terrible. Where do I go? I got to open up all the blinds. Um, so it's, um, it's interesting. You know, you're also kind of putting yourself in an uncomfortable position, but you want to encourage the kids. Um, so does anyone have any questions up to that this point? There's a question here about um, why some people's emojis stay on their video throughout and others not. Um, Susanna says her emoji goes away when the video plays. Is that because the emoji is either on your selfie picture or your video? Is that what's going on? You know what? I'm still learning Flipgrid, to be honest. Um, and I don't know how to put an emoji on my face while I'm recording. <laughs> I, I'm so, not there yet. So Susanna, is there one of them that you played that you are seeing the emoji on the video? You can unmute and tell us, we could look at it. Hi, yeah, this is Susanna. I, I just played a bunch of them and like my emoji just disappeared. So you okay. could actually see my face and then other people's, I'm not sure because I flipped through them quickly. Yeah. Actually, the emoji stayed on their face while they were talking. I think so that's I, what happened. I, I just think that quick. the people who have it on, they worked on recording it a certain way. Uh, so oh. when you look at my video, um, my sweaty red face will turn into my regular face. Yeah. During yeah. The video. Okay. Because I just... Don't yeah, added I added it. I added it after I recorded just to the selfie picture. Yes, that's how I did it. I see, but you could maybe do it before. Yes, okay. my students play around with that. The first time we used it, they knew how to do it. Okay, <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> but they still can't find our assignments on Google Classroom. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah, I noticed there was a place to put the emoji on the video, and then there was a place for emoji. Um, on the um just on the selfie so fanny fanny castro do you have a video in here where you were able to do it while you were recording maybe you can tell us how you did it or hi I, yeah. I just when i went on it, yeah i saw the i saw the emojis so uh -huh. i had it and then i hit record Okay. And then afterwards it asked for the selfie and I put another emoji on. So okay. I, I think I think that's how I did it. Okay, perfect. Nice to know. Okay. Let me see if I can manage that. Let's see. Oh, there we go. So then we put the sticker while we're recording. Okay, there we go. Very nice, okay. So to record, you have all these little options over here and you're able to edit it so that during the whole video, you are covered. There we go, that's what I learned today. Yay, we're all learning, this is awesome. Thank you. Um, okay, so we will move on to look at some other things. So to create a topic, um, I'm not going to show what my students actually did. I'm just going to show how I organized my Flipgrid. So I have, like I said, I don't believe in less is more. Um, so I had different topics here. So for each topic, I actually told my students what I wanted as well as 
when I created it, I wrote it in. So um, let's say my topic was introductions. I would say, introduce yourself. Um, and then I would record myself and move on. Now you can alter the recording time, which I'm going to go over here. Um, you have to listen to them. So of course, we want to encourage our students to speak as much as possible. If you teach in a high school and you have 100 students, you probably don't want to make the settings three minutes each because that will be a lot of time. So um, I recommend 30 seconds to a minute. Plus, they don't really want to talk that more, uh, talk that much more. And if they do, they can always record another video. So, um, you know, that's up to you. So recording time, you can alter that. For the prompt, you can also put sentence starters for your beginners. For introductions, hi, my name is, you know, something along those lines so that they can refer to something. And on the bottom, you have different things that you can use to make your uh, topic a little more interesting. I've only made myself familiar with record a video. Uh, what I've learned about Flipgrid is you really have to play with the website. You have to think about what you want to do, and then you kind of figure things out along the way. Because sometimes, you know, like I'm going to explain some things to you that you might not be interested in using at all. Whereas there are things where you're like, oh, I would like to do that, but I'm not familiar with it. So you have to learn to play with it so that you can kind of reach your goal. Um, you can also add topic tips. Like I said, for EdCamp, I was not looking at the camera. I was like, I think I was looking at the ceiling most of the time. I realized I had to be looking at my screen. So, you know, you could put a tip like, look at the camera. Uh, you could put an attachment, maybe some guidelines, whatever you want. Uh, sometimes I just feel like less is more in this context. Just tell the students what you want. Too much might confuse them, but, you know, it depends on your group. So after your students respond, this is so much fun. Um, how do you highlight great responses? Um, so you can sparkle and vibe. To be honest, I, I am not too familiar with these, but it's really cool. So um, I'll go back to what my students did. And so once I go to the videos, I can now click actions and um, Oh, no, that's for mixtape. I'm sorry. Got ahead of myself. Um, so I could click the video and then I could um, I could click the fire right here. You're basically telling me, kid, you are on fire right now. Keep going. Um, we also have this option, which I actually really like. It's called the feature app. And when a kid gets it, I feel like they get really excited and I'll show you why. And you have the topic for mixtape, which I will go back to. But what's really awesome is I starred two students here. And that is because I felt like those two students did a really awesome job. And when you star a video, it goes to the top. So if I go to our grid, I can tell Lizette that she is on Here fire. Right, right, right. All right, so I'm, I'm sparking her right now. Sounds like some really cool new slang. Um, and so I've just sparked her and now she'll get a notification and you know, it makes the kids feel good. Um, so after that is the feature. And so I really like the feature. It makes the kids feel really important. And it also lets the other students know what you are looking for. So, oh, wow, this student really got the main idea here. And so the student gets a notification. And then when the other students go to upload their videos, they can look at that as a guide. So they are learning from each other. 
but they're not strictly relying on each other. So it's, you know, another way that they can do some group work. Now, mixtapes is really, really, really cool. And so mixtapes allow you to make a compilation of videos for the students so that they can understand the main idea. You can have them do a video as like an exit slip and move forward. So um, if you go to your screen, I will, actually I'll, I'll backtrack. So um, in preparation for Animal Farm, my students did a virtual group jigsaw activity where they worked together and they created a PowerPoint and we did virtual presentations. The activity to follow this was the Stalin, the Trotsky, the Karl Marx, uh, Russian Revolution. The students then had to go to each topic and write something that they learned from the other groups who presented. And so what I did was I looked at the top videos in every category and I created a mixtape. So when you go to mixtape, I created it here, pre-reading for Animal Farm. And now I could tell my students, go to this mixtape. And so I can also create a mixtape of your responses. All right, so I can take Jen, we're gonna add to mixtape. Our new mixtape is, New York State TESOL, we're creating it, All right? So I have just added, I'm gonna add Laura to our mixtape and you choose which one and then you are able to lead the students there. So while I'm teaching Animal Farm, I could say, hey guys, why don't you go to the mixtape and why don't you listen to the videos that really touched upon the important topics of the book? That way now you can make these larger connections these you know real world connections so i find that to be really cool uh does anyone have any questions on those features those are like amazing i bet there's a lot to explore in there there were a couple questions in the um in the chat one is about the guide is that the guide you're going to show us at the end the link to the yes i have a link to it yep okay and then um liz was asking about hyperdocs I'm not sure. Is that something that you, I must have missed you saying that, but is that I just actually, mean linking really, to the. Um, I didn't touch upon it. Usually I just put um, anything like that into Google Classroom. Right. I haven't played too much with Flipgrid because I've only been using Flipgrid for a week and a half. Yeah. So um, I didn't want to throw too much at the kids. So usually I will put the main stuff onto Google Classroom. Plus it also helps me with organization. Yes. But um, I'm sure there is a way to put all of that in there. As you go to the topics and add more, there are just so many things that you can add to it. How do you keep, um, let's say you have your Google Classroom, you have the session uh, set up for that top, you know, um, assignment. And one of the assignments is create a flip grid about, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, Stalin. Um, what do you, how do you manage it on your side? Is it something that they link it back to that when they submit assignment or you just kind of have to know to go over to Flipgrid and look for it? What's like a good strategy to manage both sort of environments? Well, I love technology, but I don't trust it. Uh, <laughs> so I always keep a paper grade book. So I will just take out my paper grade book and just put like a check. You know, I'm not grading the students on the quality of their videos, just yeah. They do, you know, and even if they're just reading from a paper, as, at, at least they're speaking. So, um, so the way you would know, for example, like, would you write an assignment over in the Google Classroom area, go to Flipgrid and do this thing, and then you just go to Flipgrid and check it? Yes. Okay. Got it. Yeah, that's exactly how I would do it. I like to put all the assignments onto Google Classroom. It mm -hmm. also helps me when I transfer things because once you have an assignment on google classroom you can also put in a numerical grade even if you have to like manually go to flipgrid right got it okay and if anyone else on the chat i know a lot of you do have some experience if you have any suggestions on managing the assignment 
And because I find sometimes going into Flipgrid a bit confusing. Um, and if you're managing in your Google Classroom, the assignments coming in, like how, how people have connected the two. Um, if anyone has any thoughts on that, I'd be interested. Or if you've tried the mixtapes, um, if anyone has tried those out, definitely let us know. I'll have you continue, Eleni, because I realize the time now, we're getting close to four. So I want you to be able to share that, that document and you know, anything else you wanted to share. Um, so I'll go through this quickly. Mm -hmm. um, at the top, uh, you have an option called Grid Pals. And that is essentially a modern day pen pal. And so through your account, so you see here at the top, you have Grid Pals. You can be hidden or active. If you, if you wanna be active, you can find someone that teaches um, eighth grade ESL in Texas. Mm -hmm. And you can connect with that teacher and you guys can make videos back and forth. So it's a modern day pen pal and that is, it's really cool. You could share ideas. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but I think that's something that I would attempt once we're back in school. I feel like now it might be too much to try, mm -hmm. but um, it's a really good way for students to communicate with other people. That sounds so fun. It would be kind of cool. Maybe, maybe in the fall, we could get some nice TESOL people from different parts of the state to, you know, opt in to be um, flip grid pals. It'd that'd be, be awesome. That'd be fun. Okay. Yeah, I would love to. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, me too. It sounds fun. Um, then you have Disco Library. This is where you can explore things. So um, if you go to your Disco Library, no, where are we? Oh, there we go. Okay. If you go to your Disco Library, you can now search for things. Uh, see what other people have made videos about. And it's really cool. And then you can just assign it in. Um, what's cool is if you are um, teaching a specific topic, you can do that. Um, I searched for animal farm. I didn't find too much, but, um, oh yeah, I got farm animals. Um, <laughs> you could change the grade and now that'll change it. So here we have uh, symbolism in animal farm. And so now I could add this to add this topic to my own grid, which is really cool. So now um, teachers are able to share materials, which is what we all want to do. We want to collaborate with one so another. So if you added that in to your flip grid, that looked like it was related to what you're really teaching. Yeah. So what would you see in there? Would you see that teacher's students' grids? Or what, what are you seeing when you add that? No, it should be um, a blank for Yeah, so here is how I'm creating the assignment. So I'm basically just stealing their assignments. <gasps> that's crap. Oh my God, that's great. Yeah. So it's, it's their it's prompt, in other words, their prompt and et cetera, that you could use the same prompt. So now my students have it. They're probably uh -huh. like, Miss E, what are you doing right now? It's after <laughs> school hours. <laughs> So if you moved that, let's say you're like, oh, that looks like a good prompt and you added it, does it automatically show to your class then? Is there a way that you could put it to the side if you're not sure you want to launch it yet? You know what? There probably is a way. Mm -hmm. See? I was thinking maybe you make a, uh, a grid that is just for you, like you don't show your students. It's just so you can collect some of these different topics. Oh, you could change the static to be hidden. Oh, perfect. So, there you go. That's just for you. And then frozen, I would assume no one can add any videos to it. They can just view it. Okay. Very nice. So uh, someone's asking, could you show again? How do you get to that part? Yep. So up at the very top, you have my activity, my grids are your classes, mixtapes, grid pals, and then disco library. Okay. I love the names of the sections of this thing. Someone mentioned that they thought flocabulary works very well. Natasha, Natasha, you want, do you want to, is this Natasha? No, this is, um, yeah. Tell us about flocabulary if you want to unmute yourself. Flocabulary. 
Here we are. Natasha, maybe Natasha's not able to unmute. Hi. I think oh, hi. Hi, how are you? So I use vocabul vocabulary for my social studies class. Okay. Um, and it actually sings to you. It's a rap version of all the curriculum you could think of. So when Helen was doing her video, my kids actually respond with raps that they make inside there. So there's something called Lyric Lab, and it gives you the prompts to it that you can kind of use, like what you did just now by in the Disco Library. And I, I think it's fun. Oh, that sounds awesome. So it's that first one, Vocabulary Raps? Yeah. So if okay. you just type in vocabulary, they have different lessons um, okay. inside there. Um, on their actual website or in Flipgrid? No, in, in Flipgrid, if you type in vocabulary. Yeah, I typed it in here. You didn't see it? You no, see but, vocabulary wraps there. Well, tr maybe click on that. Um, let me open my Flipgrid again. Okay. Vocabulary. So it usually comes up as its own thing? What yeah, it's the... actually its own thing. Yeah, yeah, got it. Oh, there, there. Looking at yes. it. Yes. It's so funny, but it doesn't come up down there. That's dumb. Okay. Yeah. So, what, so when you click there, oh, 54 topics. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then when you click on them, they actually are wraps me. Oh, let's try the pronouns. If you don't mind, Eleni, open that one. Okay, and then you can select a grid that you put it into. That's how, Liz, I was saying you embed it. You kind of bring it into your own class. Okay, so now they have to watch this video. Where is the video? Okay. Oh, you have to join, you have to join for free. Okay. okay. We'll have to explore that, the vocabulary. Awesome. Oh, and one thing I wanted to show is um, you see how long um, the videos are. So if you go back to your grids, um, so for our grid, um, we have 0.2 hours of shared learning. So it lets you know how much uh, time, you know, you're gonna go through them you need to go through everything. Okay, so it gives you an idea of how much total kind of footage there's going to be in that area for you to have to listen to. Yeah, and so even for the vocabulary, yeah. you have three weeks worth of audio, which is really cool. So that's like a lot of material, in other yeah. words. Wow. So can students also explore in this section? the disco yes. library or they'd have to have an account to do that i would assume they need an account yeah and then they could kind of look in here interesting so there's a lot of um materials actually in that section of the disco library yeah the disco library is really cool yeah so it's a nice way to kind of augment especially because everything we always are challenged in enl classrooms with um, kind of an overload of reading, writing, and an underload of listening, speaking. So yeah. this is a nice way to complement, you know, um, the, the reading and writing piece, because you can obviously listen to the videos and then read more, write more, and it just kind of keeps all the four skills integrated there. Um, wonderful. Anything last thoughts that you want to share, um, Eleni, before the hour here? Uh, no, that was it perfect uh, you can create your own topics let's see any questions we just did questions and um that's not it my links are somewhere okay oh yeah we want to get the link to that booklet that you said that sounds really helpful okay, where the guidebook <clears throat> my links disappeared okay um so i actually have it in here Flip because you're so organized. I, I can't help. I wish I wasn't, though. Sometimes it makes me crazy. I know, but I love people like you. Oh, my gosh. So I'm actually going to take a link to this PDF and put it in the chat. Oh, fab. 
Okay, so this is a PDF that has more of like the how to's and ideas and that kind of thing. Yes. Perfect. And your presentation, if you don't mind sharing it, if you want to make this Google slide shareable, maybe you could put the link into the um, chat as well. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Appreciate it. Um, right. um, great. Yeah, so would I make it shareable and then send the... Yeah, if you want to click share and just make sure it's on anyone with the link can view okay. mode. Um, just because sometimes I share those links and then no one can open the doc. So go to advanced at the bottom. Yeah, and then um, change under specific people. Up a line. So next is under specific. Specific people can access, just hit change. And then do anyone with the link. Okay. Can view. Perfect. Save. And da -da 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 -da. the and it's doing its thing. Game. Da -da -da -da. Well, it's four o'clock, so the internet must shut down now. I think Nice Tees all broke the internet anyway with all of our webinars. So um Okay. Well, you know what? Try again. Let's see. We'll persist. If not, I have everyone's email who registered for the session. I can easily email everybody the link. So we can do that. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming and I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Um, we really appreciate Eleni stepping up and doing this, especially because, um, you know, we're all still in the learning phase and to you know come out here and and share is is very brave big time respect for teachers always and especially now so um we wish all of you the best to play around i'm going to make my kids do some flip grids with me so i get more comfortable with it and i'm going to start to use it as well so um we can we can maybe uh create a um, nice t cell flip grid link and we can all start sharing ideas there too. So any last words, Eleni? No, I'm so thankful that you guys had me. We are so glad. We all, we all want to go to Cyprus. I mean, Cyprus, to Crete. I want to go to Cyprus also. Cyprus I've been to, but not to Crete. Crazy. Um, you are all awesome. We love seeing the positive comments in this group chat. It's like, it, it's, nourishes our soul and you all are amazing thank you for for what you're doing and um, make sure you go to our website nice t -Sol. we have awards open just for this month of may we have a lot of teacher awards and we have awards for your students some awesome student contests art based and also digital stories flipgrid would be a great medium for your student to create something and you can help them with it and submit it and you win a free conference registration and your student gets a prize. Um, so definitely go and look up on our conference web on our conference tab on our website all about the awards and contests. They're all due on June 1st. So um, thank you. Have a great afternoon. And oh, Christine, I see Christine's here. She's our VP membership. She's also on Long Island. Um, thanks, everybody for being here and I will email you the link to her presentation. I'm gonna stay with Eleni and get the link and I'll check your email in the next few minutes. I think it was shared actually. Oh, you managed to post it? Um, I have two people on it. Um, when I look uh, at here, it says anyone with link and I posted the link in here. Oh, okay, sorry, you know what? It scrolled past and I didn't see, so I'll just redo it. Okay, oh good, so I don't have to do the email. All right, I'm gonna go get some fresh air. Everyone go outside and just take in the air. Well, you deserve it. Day out. I know. The CTLE is on our website. So you go to nicetsol.org. You go over to the resources tab. You look at webinars, and there is a link there to apply for CTLE. So um, only members can apply, but you can have as much CTLE as you want. And those of you that I've seen a few times on the webinars and who are not members yet, I, I am going to chase you down. So we want you to be a member. <laughs> um, awesome, Pam. Yay, welcome. We're glad to have you. And uh, oh, the doggy needs to get out. That's our cue. I'll see you all <laughs> later. <laughs>
Take care. Thanks so much, Eleni. No problem. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Lindsay. That's really nice to hear. Oh, thank you, Lindsay. Yay. Oh, man. Love. T-cell people are the best. They are. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you later. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye.